Fellow AMEK and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at John chapter 5 verses 26 through 29. So this is going to be a bit of a long one and I probably will have something to say at the end about the implications of some of what's going on. But let's get into the text. Last time in John chapter 5. Here is our rubric and let's read the words. Sicut enim pater habet vitam in semet ipso, sic dedit et filio vitam habere in semet ipso, et potestatum dedit ei et judicium acere quia filius hominis est. Nolite mirari hoc quia venit hora in qua omnes qui in monumentis sunt audient vocum eos, et procedent qui bona fecerunt in resurrectionem vitae que vero mala egerent in resurrectionem judicii. Dark back there. 26. Secut just as enim post positive for and pater in the nominative singular form as our subject. Habet from habeo, pretty clear. Third person singular, present tense, active and indicative. We get vitam with an uh, am for accusative singular feminine, direct object, in prepositional phrase, in taking the ablative, not the dative, just doing the Greek, sorry. We can tell because of the ipso here, semit is a bit weird. Uh, I don't remember when we last saw it. That may have been chapter two, but that's been a long time ago for me. Seek ends this clause, so I should write that down, ablative singular and the masculine because of the O and it's referring Semit tells us that this is a person. This is an unusual thing, at least for me, that Jerome does. I'm not used to seeing et uh, in Semit ipso except here in Book of John and it, it appears elsewhere in the Bible too. But it's it's just a way of saying the reflexive in Latin to uh, because the Greek has, in this case, I think actually in <laughs> every case that we've seen this, heautoi, which is correspondent to ipso, but samet is added for the reflexive prefix on the pronoun that Greek has. I don't know actually if that's counted as a reflexive prefix. Oh well, that's what I'm calling it. And uh, I think the way that I've translated this in the past in is in his very self, or in his very own self. But moving on, uh, seek thus dedit from do dare dedi. So we have the perfect stem, third person singular, and it's active and indicative. This et is going to be functioning not really as a and conjunction, but um, also, I think is how I'm gonna translate it. I forget what in English we would call also, other than just a conjunction. Uh, filio, dative singular because of dedit, needing a indirect object. And then we tom am for another accusative direct object either of dedit or of habere or of both so we, we can do he, the father gave to the son to have life or the father gave to the son life to have yeah six one way half a dozen the other in prepositional phrase i'm oh, sorry present active infinitive because the ere -E. same prepositional phrase so i'm not going to bother parsing that Reading 26 is going to be a mouthful. Moving on into 27, et potestatem, em, accusative singular, and potestas, potestatem. That will be a feminine, because it's os, atis, it are almost always feminine. You can never think of uh, anything that isn't a feminine in that form. Did it, we've already saw here, no need to parse, a, common enough not to parse. Et judicium, which is a word we saw, if not last page, then the page before. This is accusative singular neuter. With another infinitive here, ere. And then this subordinate clause just explains why all of this is happening. Quia filius, us, for nominative singular subject, don't need to parse it. Hominis, is, this is from homo, hominis, genitive, singular, Oof. <laughs> Masculine. I was thinking, 
a lot of o onus or inus words or neuter because nomen because that's e in whatever uh, est from summa se fui don't need to parse that one so this is a reference back to Daniel I don't remember what chapter in a couple other places it's the name that it's it's the title that Jesus gives himself in John and I'm not sure if it shows up in any of the other gospels that is something that I should know but I don't as I was writing I realized that I that present when the verb is perfect. So, sorry about that. Moving on into 28, nolite, I-T-E, can only be a second person, plural, present tense, active, imperative. That's really the only way that this verb is used, it seems. It does have other forms, not that anybody ever uses them. Uh, mirari, here we have a present infinitive. In this case, though, it is passive form, though this verb is Deponents, so this is from Miror, Miratus Sum, I believe that last one is, I'm not positive. And it means to wonder, to marvel. I assume we get the word mirror from it, which is odd, kind of like the word um, ignore, which comes from ignoro in Greek. And in Greek, it means to make known, I think. Could be mixing that one up, too. But anyway, present deponent infinitive. Uh, hawk from hic, hic, hawk. So accusative, singular, neuter, uh, indefinite. Uh, air conditioner. In indefinite, demonstrative, referring to everything that Jesus just said. So be unwilling, is what that means, to marvel at this thing. Why? Quia, when it, this is the present or perfect verb that we've seen enough times before, so I'm just going to write that down as the two options. And our Greek is erketai. Erketai is a present tense, so then present is the correct translation here, not perfect. Hora, hora, horai, nominative, singular, feminine, in prepositional phrase, Qua from qui quat cold. This can only be ablative, singular, feminine. Omnes is the wrong form to be part of the prepositional phrase, so it closes off there. Qua then must refer back to hora as the nearest feminine singular object. So comes the hour in which omnes, es could be a nominative or accusative plural, masculine or feminine. Uh, qui doesn't really help us. No, correction, it does help us. Uh, masculine plural is the intent here because qui can be only nominative singular masculine or plural telling us omnes must be as I already said I'm becoming redundant apologies uh, masculine but still that doesn't tell us if this is accusative or nominative taking a look at head though uh, monumentis sunt prepositional phrase plus Is right there. Soon can't be part of the prepositional phrase. Ablative, plural, monumentem. No, monumen. I don't know what the nominative singular form of monuments is, but maybe it's monumentis, monumentis. That happens. But this is a neuter noun, and this means monument, naturally and grave, which is how we would translate it here, is how many people are actually in monuments, in whatever they call the larger marble buildings. Not many. Especially not many of the people Jesus would be preaching to. Not many people that the early church, not, not the majority of the people the early church would be preaching to will wind up in monuments most will end up in unmarked graves, if that. But anyway, so that's that. Sunt with qui. That's from summa se fui. Shouldn't need to parse that. And then audient, here we get to the verb that goes with omnes, telling us that omnes is nominative, plural, masculine, masculine, common, referring also to the men and the women. Uh, also to the men and women. Also to the women. There we go. But audio, audire, audiunt should be the present to stem so then present tense, not stem. So this E is a future, as I think we saw last page. So third, plural, future tense, active, 
indicative I'm starting to lose my voice. Here, what do they hear? Wokem, E-M. Accusative, singular, wokes, wokes, it's feminine. And then aos, genitive, singular, referring back to Jesus, owning the voice. Moving on into verse 29, et procedent. So this is procedeo, procedere, procedui, I think. I don't have that in my notes. So if it were procedeo, it would be present tense. But if it's just procedo, then it would be future tense. We have a future with audient. Let's take a look ahead before we actually parse that, except to say that it is a third person plural. Uh, qui, same as qui above. Uh, bona can't be the subject, so the only option for bona here is accusative, plural, neuter for generic, uh, for reference to unspecified things, though we should know because of what fecerent is to do. Jesus is speaking about. Well, the, the good things are all the things that he has been teaching, all the things that were taught as good deeds in the Old Testament, that is the, the natural moral law. And then for the Jews, prior to Jesus fulfilling the Jewish positive law, also all of the Levitical laws. But now, after Jesus' death, not the Levitical laws, complicated, no time to get into it. Anyway, facio, uh, facere, feki. So we have F-E-C, change in stem, perfect tense, with errant ending, it's third person plural, perfect, active, indicative. All who have done good, in prepositional phrase, resurrectionem, E-M for accusative, singular, and this is a feminine noun, resurrectio, resurrectionem. So everything that I said about O nouns is wrong earlier at least here, in taking the accusative, so motion into which, which fits with that verb. Wittai can't be in the prepositional phrase, so we close that off, but genitive, singular, feminine, owning the resurrection. Uh, qui vero, so we've got another qui, new subject, drawing a distinction against this qui. Uh, mala is going to be the same as bona, so accusative, plural, uh, neuter, adverb here. Egerunt. This comes from ago agere egi, and it is an interesting choice for Jerome to use ago versus fecerunt, and this matches the Greek, because in the Greek we have for fecerunt and up here for fakere, the Greek word poieo, which means is the same word that's used in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. By the Septuagint to translate, uh, to translate bara, Hebrew word for create, and in the Greek we also have the word proso, corresponding to where egerunt is. So this means to do, to make, to create, but proso means to do, to act, to fare, to practice, and it's the same distinction between these two. Ago agere egi means to do, to act, to fare, to lead. And so we could also understand that as practice, just like proso, which may be where we get even get the word for practice. But this is going to be the same form as fekerunt. No need to parse that, just pull this over if the pen works. In prepositional phrase, resurrectionum, no need to parse. And then udikii is going to match witai, except that it is neuter. And frightening. And that didn't really help us with parsing procedent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check my lexicon and be right back. Bad news. Gassels doesn't have it. <laughs> so thinking on it, this looks like uh, from the word for fall. So kado, kadare, kedi. So it may be related to that one, and that's a third. There would does hap it does happen that when you have related words like with feki, like with rapio, that the stem will change and a, a vowel switching into an e. And that may be what's happening here. So I think I think it is a second, not a second. I think it is a third conjugation, which then means that this e is going to be future. 
and I hope I remember to put a note to clarify whether or not I am correct. So I'm going to put a question mark there, active and indicative. Final note before we take a look at this in its own context is the word resurrectionem. So the Greek correspondence that we have to that one is the word anastasis. And anastasis is made up of two parts, on a preposition, which can sometimes mean up, on, and then the noun for the verb for to stand. At resurrect, resurrectionem, we have, here I'll use this one, re, again, is normally what that prefix mean, and then surrect, and I don't actually remember what surrect comes from. So I'm gonna go back to Cassell and write that down. The answer is, uh, surrect comes from surgo, which means to get up, which makes sense. So we've got get up again and stand up in the Greek, close correspondent. But the meaning then that we should take from this is what Paul says in Acts when the Jews, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are, are trying to wring his neck and he divides them by saying, they are, are, there, this is a disagreement about the resurrection of the dead. And, and Paul means a physical resurrection, as Jesus also means a physical resurrection. And then we can think back also to Job. And what does Job believe? He believes that with his own physical eyes, he will see his arbiter, his advocate. He will see, in other words, Christ, whose name doesn't actually appear anywhere on this page, but is the one speaking, the one who is the advocate of all sinners, and who will stand and, and does stand before God the Father, defending us against the accusations of the devil. So that when the final judgment does come, those who have done good will be raised physically to the new life, and those who have done evil will be raised physically to their everlasting judgment. Well, that's a sad note for the week after Epiphany or the week after the week after Epiphany. I hope you had a good Epiphany. I hope I had a good Epiphany. This is before Christmas for me. Gotta rush all these recordings in. But you don't care. Let's take a look at it in its own context. For just as Father has life in his very own self, thus he also gave Son life to have in his very own self, and power he gave him also to do judgment, because he is Son of Man. Do not marvel at this thing, because hour comes in which all who are in graves will hear his voice and will proceed, who have done good things, into resurrection of life who truly have practiced evil, should add things in there, into resurrection of judgment. Thank you very much for joining me. You have a very good week. Wale.